Yeah. Every one of us. It just depends on how bad you push to the strain. Right. Wow. And they fix mine. I was married to the second one, so how long ago was that? 25 years ago? I don't know. I, I used kept that track. time frame. Which <laughs> wife was I married to? I, I haven't done that investigative reporting yet to document oh. that time frame, but <laughs> we're live. Live. By the way, oh, you know. I'm going to well, have. That's good then. Yeah. That's good. What time you got to be there? Well, Dr. Hogarth wanted to give me valves yeah. 10 years ago. We got to be there at 6:30 in the morning. Gee. Mm. I know. First, sir, first surgery though. Perfect. Yeah. So you getting up Hogarth early? Hogarth wanted to give me valves. You getting up early and going in, or are you going in the night before? No, I'm going in the morning. You're going to leave in the morning. We're going to go pick Danielle up, and she'll stay all day in case we got to come home tomorrow. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> Jackie's not good at city traffic. And with everything she's got going on, you know, she yeah. says, oh, I could do it if you weren't in the car. I said, <laughs> <laughs> you know, that says a lot about me, doesn't it? Yeah, but I'd still I, mean, feel, still I still feel concerned about her driving, you know. Well, so do I in Chicago. <laughs> it's not easy. I mean, no, no. I'm concerned about me driving in Chicago. You know, no. Danielle and Lacey both. Lacey will come get me. Danielle will bring the car home, and that way the car is not in the parking lot for yeah. three days, too. Yeah, I agree. You can't trust the parking lot. Heck no. I mean, that's right down in the car. Right you're, in the car. You're, you're, you're in a bad history. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Jackie, Jackie asked me. She says, she says, why do you lock the doors? Just look. Just look. I used to drive truck. Yeah. <laughs> Are you guys ready? Right. 20 minutes. Three yeah, is that what it is? Okay. Uh, good evening. Thank you for everybody who is attending this tonight. Uh, this is the regular meeting of the Buchanan City Commission, October 28th, uh, 7 p.m. Uh, we do not have any recognition. If everyone can join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Please. Whedon? Yes. Bianski? Yes. Money? Present. Swem? Here. George? Here. You have a quorum. Thank you so much. Uh, I will take a motion to approve this evening's agenda. Move, move to approve the agenda as presented. Do we have support? I got support. Money Thank supports. You. Thank you. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. At this time, we will take public comment. Uh, please keep your comments to three minutes and approach the podium and state your name for the record. Okay, seeing no public approach the podium, uh, we will move on. Uh, I'll take a motion to approve the consent agenda. I'll so move. Do we have a support? I'll support. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Uh, we do not have any scheduled matters from the floor, uh, and we will take reports from departments, committees, and boards. Mr. Rich Murphy. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Uh, two items for you tonight. Um, the first is a resolution as is required by the state uh, to execute the project agreement for the grant we we're awarded for the kayak launch. Uh, we are under contract with our engineer, Avon Marsh. Uh, this is kind of a technicality of just acceptance of the terms that authorizes us to uh, sign the agreement and for the project to proceed. All right. Uh, so tonight we will consider resolution 2024, 1.0 to resolution to accept these terms. Uh, do I have a motion on the floor to either accept or deny? I'd move to approve resolution 2024.10 slash 31 as presented. Thank you. Do we have support? No support. Thank you. Roll call, please. Swem? Yes. George? Yes. Read it? Yes. Bianski? Yes. Money? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Just a reminder the match has, has all been raised for this. Um, 
Ab and Marsh will proceed on the engineering and we'll go to bid uh, with our project to break ground in the spring. Excellent. Thank you so much, Rich. Second item um, is, and we've done this before, it's uh, the local unit of government's kind of blessing of a local um, liquor license application. In this case, it's for a social district license for the livery, uh, McCollum livery project at 206, 208 Days Avenue. Um, their application has been submitted and uh, as is required is the local approval to uh, give that blessing to the application. Very good. Uh, do we have a motion on the floor to approve uh, this application? I'd move to approve resolution 2024.10 slash 31. Very good. Do we have support? I'll support. Roll call, please. George? Yes. Whedon? Yes. Mansky? Yes. Money? Yes. Well. Abstain, business interests. Motion carried. Thank you very and much. And just a heads up, uh, commissioners, I do expect us to receive uh, additional social district applications. I'm in discussions with uh, other license holders downtown who plan to kind of opt, opt into the concept, uh, as well as uh, coming before you for uh, additional redevelopment liquor license applications. Uh, so I kind of have been telling you for a couple years, <laughs> as we've gone down this road, the first person, when they got the redevelopment liquor license and they got it in their hands, now we know the path is secure and clear. I expect other uh, developers to apply and obtain these licenses, which again is a, a, a big uh, key milestone for us to kind of elevate the uh, experience and, and redevelopment projects in our downtown. So. Yeah, thank you so much. And I would like to just point out that one of the applicants that will be coming your way that will re refrain from make a notice who they are, but the fact that they were even entertaining it at this point after the, their initial mm -hmm. apprehension when we first came up with this in 2021, I believe. Yeah. You know, what a what a revolution now they see so many people getting involved yeah. and that's a testament to everybody's hard work. So I, I wanna say thank you for that because yeah. I think the last meeting, I don't know how you guys feel, but I think the last meeting really put to rest a lot of the apprehension that was coming along with what the, the social district is and what it can represent and the licenses that can spawn out of this are going to continue yeah. to bring business into Buchanan and I think that's what we need. We remember when we had four or five restaurants downtown. Yeah, yeah they were associated with the bar but you had options and McCoy, yeah. frankly you can't get in right now because there's just not enough time, there's not enough room. So it's gonna be exciting to see how these change. Yeah, I think with the social district because I've been talking to people out there and even like police chiefs and other communities and and uh, license holders, the track record is out there because we've had these social districts for three years, I think, in the state of Michigan, and there have been no problems across the state. Uh, there have been no uh, issues. Um, <coughs> it's uh, it's a kind of nice uh, enhancement of the downtown experience, but n certainly has not caused any uh, any issues or problems. So. Hey, good. before you yeah. sit. How are we doing with Sweet's application? Have they got it now? Yeah, or? they have it. Um, they, they were approved at the Liquor Commission's meeting. Okay. Perfect. Yeah, I think Ball's in their court to just pay for it and institute it. Mm -hmm. Okay. I've got, you know, and you can tell me you don't have any idea or you, you, you don't have, because I, I didn't hit you up, but where are we at with the rail demolition, the rail property demolition? Are we? We are uh, finalizing these uh, specifications for the itemized bid that Point Blue is just uh, is devising so that we can get itemization on the uh, the tire shop building. We'll get a specific bid on the demo for that. We'll get a specific bid on the mill itself and the other items, uh, the outbuilding and the concrete that's that's there. So we'll be able to um, not have everything put together and bundled and uh, we'll be able to tap that money that's approved at the county level to proceed on, I think will be the lion's share, maybe if we get lucky on all of it, so. Yeah, that's great. Well, send us an email as soon as you put it out, Rich, yeah. because I've got three contractors that I know specifically that wanna know. 
Okay. And I mean, I'll, I'll let them know yeah. is I'll let them know that it's out there. Absolutely. Perfect. And then Ross Sanders, do you know where we're at on that? Uh, I, I think they're in planning stages right now. Uh, I could get an update from Michael Rowland. It's at the architect right now. They're what? They're at the architect right now, waiting for the specs to be done for their. So the state is authorized, or the state's done whatever they needed to do. Yeah, that's done. Okay, that is yeah. done. Yeah, I mean they're just uh, getting through design now, and then they'll um, be in their contractor selection. And you know, it'd be really nice if they'd put something out on the website for us. You know, I think they're working closely with Preservation Society because they ran into some insurance things on the state side, so they reached out to Ken Preservation, and they're working under the original easement until they can figure out. Well, it'd be still be nice if something was put on Facebook and on their website. Okay, I'll talk to. Michael Rowland and see if uh, we can give a community update on that. Thank you, Rich. All right, thank you. Thanks, Rich. Okay, at this time we have no unfinished business. Uh, we will move on to new business construction contract. Consider awarding the construction contract for the Front Street Retaining Wall project. Okay, we have before us tonight uh, two bids on the Front Street Retaining Wall construction. Uh, we It includes the demolition of the existing re timber retaining wall and construction of a new concrete retaining wall along with removal and replacement of the existing sidewalks. Uh, the bid documents specify the work be completed by December 20th with an option to provide alternate completion dates. Uh, we went out for bids, we contacted many contractors, we only received two bids and only one of the contractors, the high bidder, com committed to completing by December 20th. Uh, e even with that, they still have handrails or railing install by 228 or 25. So we got two bids and you have before you tonight uh, some options on how we want to proceed with this and we can go from there. So I think I'll, I'll start off. I just want to make sure that if in the conversation that we have, if option one is happens to become the choice, just that we postpone it and not table it. I think that we can postpone it for yeah, sorry, that was my fault. No, no, it's okay. I, either way, I just know that we had defined that language yes. early on when mm -hmm. when Dan came on, and, and yeah. I think that yeah. was the correct way to go. So I just want to make sure that if somebody chooses that option, that we, we will postpone yeah. and not table. So I'll make a motion we can discuss. So I'll move to postpone the construction contract for Front Street Retaining Wall Project. Okay, do we have a second? I'll Support. second. Oh. Raquel. Let Raquel have one. No. I've got several uh, questions. Okay, and I know we, discussion. so discussion, please. Postpone is that are we going to go out for bids or are we going to I mean I don't really understand how does this engineering is this wall engineered to be cement only is that the only way we can it, it do was, that it was designed as a concrete wall concrete with, uh, reinforced with uh, reinforcement bar and it's, so it's a very robust design a 12 inch thick wall the total length 430 feet length and uh, that was the design we selected you know, like I said when I talked to you about it, that really limited the number of contractors that were going to do it because they were going to have to contract out to a cementer. Whereas if we go of a different design, and I went over and looked at the hospital, that block design that's over there, or a timber design, any of your landscapers can do that kind of wall, mm -hmm. which would very vastly open it up who can do it. Because Mac, Mac, we dealt with Mac here in the city, and I've called a couple other landscapers a year ago. They can do them kind of walls, but they can't do the cement. How many more trees, how many trees do you think we'd have to cut down? Well, that was to be determined upon excavation of the area and seeing how far the roots came down into the uh, structure. I think the bid design had two specific that he called out, but yeah, yeah the rest was contractor that, that was to be determined. Yeah. We're not really gonna know until we start digging into that hill. Okay. I mean, Mike, what is your, yeah, perhaps. So is there any way, Mike, I went and looked at it really hard. 
can we grass that or put some low tight you know flower or plant in there instead of a wall at all and just leave it grass I know. Well, that's what I said when yeah. it was suggested. But that's I what I posed the same question. Well, <laughs> but I mean, my concern was like that scrape it back was the parking it. lot, right? Because we have that weight that's going to be coming down from Hovens, right? I mean, I would like to say that we have controlled drains, and but we, we just don't anymore. And mm. the chance of us taking that wall out and putting grass there, just sloping it back, and a slide happening is probably pretty good. I would. I mean, looking. Tennessee and yep. North Carolina, what's going on right now? Just out of nowhere, their their hills are sliding. We we don't want that to our downtown. I mm. can tell you that. So basically, a 12-inch wall, we only have to excavate back maybe two feet to put in a 12-inch cement wall. A cement wall, yeah. Oh yeah, a concrete and wall. However, how high you have to go, you have to go one foot back. Oh, like for concrete, you have to go four foot in yeah. if you're four foot high. Yes. Mm. We could just eliminate the sidewalk on that side of the street and use the other side. Yeah, but you're There's still gonna two and a half feet. <laughs> I'm kidding, Norma. Norma, <laughs> chill. I mean, that was a suggestion too, but I didn't know. I didn't know. Well, like, I think there's a good availability of concrete contractors that could do that job. It's just that we didn't consider what the timeline there was. Yeah. I was gonna say it was the no. timeline that there, killed there's us. There's plenty I think, of contractors out there that can do that work. Mike, what about? What if, and I know I know I understand your apprehension for this, but I want to bring it up for the sake of conversation. The 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 steel uh, sheet piling. Sheet piling I, I I still am on board with that. It's going to be less. I don't know what it would be cost wise. Right. But you would have a whole lot less es excavation and worry, and because there's no you don't go back. You literally drive in drive the piles. In. And mm -hmm. Yep. So and and I I, I and just. Then if you Mm -hmm. You could put your Lock cement block. We could even set those cement blocks at that point if you bought the decorative block to put in front of it. Well, and here's a, here's an idea I floated we past. Anything back. Here's an idea I floated past Calla, I believe, might have been Patrick, but I had suggested that if we did the metal barriers for whatever reason, that we had uh, a mural contest to maybe support the the veterans since we are right across from. Uh, the, the legion that we that we have a mural done in support of all veterans of all races and sexes and creeds. Well, you're uh, still going to get into costs. Mark. I understand that. But no, I was thinking more of like a contest. So somebody, it, it this is this is well into if we even were to do that. But it's something that would give an aesthetic and something that would give credit to all people within the community. That you know, then and what a great asset to the legion to have something like that across the street. So, any in any event. Um, you know, first responders, police, firefighters, all of that, right? And right. I, I mean, that's where I was in the first place. Aesthetically, it's not a beautiful thing. You can make it something, but yeah. right. So and then if we look at a cost, that's another the thing, right? Wise, if the cost is half. But now you're going a completely different direction. You have reengineering and well, that's true. What I'm hearing, well, we all need. I do want to bring up my experience in this. I do, because I've drove 30 inch pipe, 90 thousand pound hammer, so. You do have to drill a pilot hole, or if you don't, you really have to pound it, which means you have to hit it that much harder. So if you have a 10 inch post that you're driving, you're probably gonna wanna they're drill a four or six inch hole. They're not posts. They're not they're, posts. They're sheets, sheets that are built yep. to just vibrate in the ground. But yep. what kind of hammer are you using? How hard are you hitting it? It's, it's a vibrant, well, I've seen them in the type of soil that you have, you can use a vibrating tool and you, they literally and they put just, it on there Almost like a, like an oscillating saw, right? The, the, the vibration and the pressure. Pretty much, and it locks everything locks together. Right, because then they have it's bolts in between each one that lock them like a, like sheeting on a roof. Yep. I guess you could say. The dirty little secret about that is they can't tell you how far that vibration goes out. Right. You know, and that's always been my problem. You got hundred year old infrastructure up there. You start wiggling it. Well, I guess what we need to do is find out what the prices are. Yeah, I think we are all in alignment. And really on find out what happened 
a decision tonight. No, this so is a perfect let's discussion. Let's let Tim research other solutions and bring it back to us with a lower price tag, hopefully. I can talk to him this week and find out what uh, our options are going forward. Don't they, don't they do a lot of that <clears throat> on, like, um, uh, beach structures? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so that would that would have to be somebody that uh, you may want to reach out to. I mean, I don't know. There has to be somebody probably around St. Joe, Benton South Harbor, Haven, St. Joe, New Buffalo. South Haven. Well, it sounds like we have opportunities for further discussion and potential cost savings. Let's hope. Uh, roll call, please, on that vote. Leader. Yes. Yeah, Keith. Option one, Dan. Yes. Money. Yes. Blum. Yes. Short. Yes. Very good. I'd kind of like to, you know, even though it's been, I'd like to put a data. I don't want to kill this. Because well, we got to address it. Screwing with it for three years. We have to address it at the next meeting when it's postponed. Yeah. Okay. So we'll set a plan up in the next two weeks. It might be to postpone that was, that again. That was my that yeah. was my biggest fear. I mean, I I don't like the prices by any definition, but on the other hand, we've been, you know, we haven't even really discussed this. Um, and Tim, thank you very much for being as aggressive about it as you have been. But as a commission and as a city, we really haven't discussed this near as much as we should have. Correct. So I think the other factor into this is that with the culvert that came on board and us trying to be fiscally oh, conservative. Oh, we had all kinds of, I mean, right. so we're going to continue to have that, too. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So I think this is just another avenue where we have a, a, a structures in front to protect the, the community, but we also have a hole in the ground that is getting worse. Good, good opportunity, too, in our special work session to talk about topics oh. like this that are going to warrant further analysis. Absolutely. Anything else? Okay. All right, moving on to expenditures. Uh, I will take a motion for our expenditures. I'm I'll make the motion, but I've got several things I'm going to bring up. Okay. Yeah. I'll support. All right, discussion, please. All right, I talked to Tim about these, and some of these are pretty trivia, but it still needs to be, people need to be made aware, and I won't talk about all of them, but um, we send our water samples to Bridgman, and this is just for everybody's information, so that we have an outsider testing our water for 680 bucks. That's something we really need to kind of do. Um, and I just wanted to point that out to the public. And excuse me for having to go through these. I didn't write them down. Um, Mr. Cameron authorized spending some money and it was for the right thing and it was for the right amount, but we just need to get in the process of following the avenues that we need to follow for anything that we do to city property. Not just anybody um, should do anything without an authorization by the city manager at least, if not the city, man, uh, city commission. ICMA, we're paying for all these memberships all the time. What are we always getting? What are we getting out of these books? Are we getting anything out of these? Yes, we are. Okay. Professional dues and membership and literature and guidance and things like that. Okay. And the other <coughs> one, the big one, and I mean, I know she did a good job, but I know there was a lot of chaos about this, and it's only $350. But cleaning the restrooms, we spent a lot of money on these restrooms. And now we let the concerts use the hall, and we don't make them clean it up. Um, Farmer's Market uses the bathrooms and we don't make them clean them up. So then the city, the taxpayers stuck with the bill. So there really needs to be something done or said to make sure that, you know, if you're using the restrooms, like if they're using the restrooms, we expect that of the public, we charge them 50 bucks to use the community center, right? We charge them like a hundred bucks now, right? And I think that's the deposit. Uh, I think that's just the deposit you're talking about. It's concert. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But if they don't clean the restrooms, they don't get their money back. Right. And then we're letting the concerts use the city hall, and they don't think they need to clean it. You know, mm -hmm. Farmer's Market complains about not them being clean, and they're using them. So, I mean, 
you know, you got the volunteers down there. Toilets ain't the best thing in the world to clean, but they're usually not that bad if it's only a couple hours. I mean, they can get messed up pretty fast, but um, we really, well, but how long did it go? I mean, and it's not your responsibility, so, you know, I'm really protecting you on this one. I'm with you, but I'm, what I'm saying is that you haven't seen them after they've been used is what I'm saying. I used to clean gas station bathrooms. I know exactly, yeah, they're not there, cool. There is some work in progress. We did change because it got to the point where either I was going down to clean the city center during working hours or I was sending one of the guys to go down and finish because we were getting an enormous amount of complaints. And that's absolute garbage. And mm -hmm. We, so we took it upon ourselves because we didn't have somebody cleaning at that moment to just, you know what, I'm going down there to make sure it's okay because our residents had paid money to use the city center. I changed all the keys, the locks. Thank to the you. City center because I, and I had Tim's permission. We talked about it. We didn't know who had keys and who was using it. Right. There is going to be some things done about it before the summer hits. Um, well, perfect. I, f I highly personally recommend well, just if they don't want to do it, we that's fine. I don't mind paying for it, but we're not going to pay for it. No. Somebody's going to dish it out, dish it up, or they're not going to use the facilities. It's a work in progress. Me and Tim are aware of it, and we dealt with it a lot this summer. Well, and I talked place. to him about it, but I, we fall, purpose, yes. you know, I specifically said I wanted to bring it up because I got a lot of the calls, and I don't get calls for nothing. Unfortunately, people do misuse, and they also steal toilet paper. So once you leave toilet paper in there, they take it. Um, what is know, the thing about toilet paper? I don't know. <laughs> I know, right? Thank you. Uh, so I just don't get it. You know, and it's yeah. single ply, ain't it? It's, if yeah, it's, it's not, not buy single ply. <laughs> it's not. It's the cheapest we can buy. So we I are. Don't. It's a work in progress. But right now, we don't have the time to go down and clean it ourselves. So well, we well, finally had someone willing to clean it for a fee we said heck yes do it yeah no i so totally i thing. totally agree but i also remember the discussion about the concerts you know because we had it down here and he was worried about an extra cost well you know well i think that's something that needs to be discussed they're still working on with the common collective group of creating mm -hmm. that I think, well, I think gonna I'm probably going to try to get on that committee. That's going to be a good resource for us to have a city commissioner or a city representative on that board and talking and working through those things because things that have done been done in the past can't continue in the future with it. Thank you. Back. So yep. that's just my opinion. It's ultimately your guys' decision on how you want to proceed. I think we'll see some progress made with the with Common right. Collective, without yes. a doubt. And I, I think, agree. Dan, you'll be happy with where the direction is going. I do believe so. All right, very good. Uh, moving on to communications. Got a vote. Oh, I'm vote. sorry, you're yes, right. Sir. My apologies. Oh, Roll call, please. Thanks, Dan. <laughs> Yansky? Yep. Money? Yes. Slim? <clears throat> yes. George? Yes. And we did. Yes. I got caught up in a two ply, one ply discussion. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We may or may not have something big coming up next week that you've been instrumental in. Yeah, so election day is next Tuesday. Uh, polls are open from 7 to 8, um, 8 p.m. Uh, if you are able to utilize early voting, it's going on right now. Um, it is insane. I am extremely proud of the turnout. We have had over 800 voters just in the South County every day, including today. 864 wow. voters went out and voted on a Monday. Um, so if you want to use that, it's just like voting on election day. It's the same process. Everything doesn't, no, nothing gets counted until 801 on Tuesday night. So i um, excited to see that finally take off, but expect a high turnout um, from what I'm seeing from early voting and absentee voting. There, there's gonna be some lines. Be nice to your election workers. They are trying to move you through as fast as possible. Um, we are all working extremely hard to make sure everything goes as smooth as possible. So please vote. It's important. <laughs> oh, and the meeting time. <laughs> They're expecting an extremely high turnout. Yes, it's from what I've seen right now, we've already had 101 city residents just in three days go and vote early. And I mean, I've, I've been very active in it since before the fair, and it's just going to be extremely over the top to turn out. Yeah, I did not Which is it. finally a good thing. I'll be excited about that. I did, there was something I wanted to ask you. I was there on Saturday, and it, it was, I got there at 7 o'clock in the morning, and we didn't open until 8.30, and there was a line already at the door by the time I got there at 7 o'clock. 
couldn't believe it. Yeah, my brother <laughs> said he had to wait 30 minutes to get I in. I was up to like wow. uh, almost an hour and a half on Saturday wait time. So wow. everybody was really nice about it. Um, it was <laughs> I've never seen, and I've been doing elections since 2016. Um, I've never seen the wow. kind of turnout. So it's yeah. awesome. I've never seen. I mean, I work for the Republican GOP. Uh, full disclosure. I'm also a rep, uh, Republican delegate for the county, and the Republican Party sold $16,000 of Trump paraphernalia at the fair yep. in one week. It's just absolutely insane. I did want to ask you, do we have poll watchers? Uh, challengers and poll watchers? Yes. Oh, yeah. Okay. We have five different um, organizations that are credentialed to be challengers for the election. Uh, that's not including the parties, so Democrat and Republican parties can also. Send so we kind of evenly with the Democrats and Republicans. Um, so it doesn't matter in the polling location as long as there's enough room. But in the AB County Board, you'll notice there's a posting outside because I only have four election inspectors working the AB County Board. There's only one challenger allowed in there from each political organization or party. Because see, Benton Harbor and Benton, Benton Harbor City and Benton Township. We're having some real political issues. I will tell you this: the the challengers that we I had two challengers on um, Saturday at early voting. They were extremely respectful and nice, and no problems. I don't expect any problems here. And my workers know what they're doing, and I don't have any issues. And if there is good. an issue, they'll bring it to me, and we'll figure it out. So. It's because they have a good leader. Thanks. That's what it is. <laughs> but That's how it goes. I'm not worried about. You know, there's a lot of there's a lot of bad rap around challengers after the 2020 election. Um, I think you saw people get passionate. and But for the most part, 99% of challengers are just normal everyday people that you're gonna see every day. So both parties know they've been done a really good job of training challengers nowadays. So I'm excited to see it, so. And I just wanna put it out there too. The bigger cities are the ones where they have the problems. It's not usually the smaller communities. And we haven't had any trouble. We didn't have any trouble with the fair. Everybody, you know, I mean, we had kids running down with stuff at the Democrat tent waving Trump stuff, you know, so I mean. Both it, parties and, are gonna be heavily out. You're yeah, gonna see a lot yeah. of it. So, it's a big yeah. election. Local as well, so right. don't forget to vote local. I always remind people. <laughs> All right, so, we good? Yeah. All right, meeting dates? Just the meeting dates because of Veterans Day is Monday, November 11th. The regular meeting was scheduled a year ago um, on November 12th, so just make a note that we will not be here We'll be here Tuesday at 7 p.m. Uh, there's also a city commission will hold a special meeting the next morning on the 13th at 9 a.m. That's where Commissioner Swem has been talking a lot about with the strategic planning. They're gonna sit down and talk about where they are on expenditures and revenues and their planning and how they wanna move forward. So if you wanna come listen to that, that's gonna be a good one and very informal. So no decisions made at that one. It's just to kind of get in touch and caught up and on the same page, so. Very good, thank you, Kyla. Uh, at this time, we'll take public comments on non-agenda items only. Please keep your comments to three minutes and approach the podium and state your name for the record. <laughs> okay. We may or may not have forgotten. Oh, it's just for you. Thank you. Norma Ferris, 304 North Oak. Are we making any progress at all getting a drugstore in Buchanan? Anybody working on it? I'll answer you in my comments. All right, next. How about a newspaper? We're doing all of this economic stuff. How about us? We're the residents. A drugstore and a newspaper. Buchanan has not been without a drugstore, and lots of the time we have had two. Most of the time. <laughs> so. Thank you, Norma. Okay, seeing no further co public comment, uh, executive comments, we'll go to the city manager. Okay, all I have tonight is that we're wrapping up our audit, and the auditors have asked for some additional information. I anticipate will be done in sometime in November. Very good. Thank you so much. Uh, Commissioner George? Uh, sorry. No, you're good. Um, I seen the sweeper out there. 
kind of want a tour of that. I think that it looks really nice. Glad we could uh, do that. Um, election day, yes, get out and vote. Um, do your civic duty. And then lastly, I know that we kind of just um, kind of just laid it on the ground and are waiting to hear back from the Common Collective, I believe the group is called. Um, but I am 100% in agreement with if the people don't clean the city center, I don't really think that it's the city's job. I know you guys have schedules of your own that you're supposed to have done, so I don't think that that should be one of them. Um, you know, and it's just a common courtesy, like if you use something that you bring it back in better condition than you received it in anyway. So I feel like um, I'm supportive of that. And then just the retaining wall, I feel, I just wanna say thank you for all your work on it. Um, and I'll be looking forward to the options that we will have. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Bianski. I just concentrating. Um, the drugstore, I reached out. They basically, th there are two pharmacists that want property, but they want it on Front Street. They want off street parking. There's very limited properties that are available with that. We're not going to get a Walgreens. Walgreens will not, they're um, shrinking, not growing. They've put too many drugstores in the United States of America. Uh, overpriced grocery stores is basically what they are. Um, and the gentlemen that want to open a drugstore basically only want to sell prescriptions and emergency. No cigarettes, no alcohol, no beer. Well, but the properties are very limited. We don't really have any t anything in town that these particular gentlemen want. Um, and well, I'm just answering your question, Norma. I don't have any solutions. I very aggressively pursued it. I talked to Rite Aid, I talked to Walgreens, corporate level, and Walgreens has no intentions of opening any new drugstores. And Rite Aid still owns the building, and it's for rent at $4 a square foot. Um, the other comment I will keep to myself. Very good, thank you. Commissioner Money. All right, I've got a few things here, as always. Uh, first off, I think uh, a big shout out goes to uh, the little pop-up store we have downtown here, McBain's Lane, for all of the work that they have done uh, for this disaster relief um, in the Carolinas, Virginia, and Tennessee. Uh, I was involved in a little bit of it, uh, but uh, what they did was, was really an outpouring, you know, of all of the citizens and, and all of the people within, within the city of Buchanan and the township. Uh, the Buchanan Township uh, let their uh, office or their fire station go out there and I went out there on a couple different occasions and they had more stuff out there than you could shake a stick at. What, uh, what uh, well, um, and like I said, there, there's been a lot of outpouring. And I think uh, the whole of Buchanan can uh, take a little bit of uh, credit for what's going on because kind of like at the last moment, <clears throat> uh, which was Friday at the uh, uh, 11th hour, basically, I found out they needed a uh, um, fire department gear reached out to a couple fire departments, basically Buchanan City. They had expired fire gear down there to the tune of about eight or nine bags uh, with the uh, blessings of the city manager and uh, the, the city chief, Mike Adams and Bobby Blaylock. That stuff was transported down and delivered in some place in Tennessee, you know. So uh, the good part of that is, is like I said, you know that that's all citywide stuff, and and it's it was a it was a tremendous uh, outpouring by everybody that was involved in it. Sadly enough, we get all kind of press down here, but something like that that goes good, 
we don't hear anything about it in the newspaper or anything else, uh, just on Facebook or whatever. So uh, I just really wanted to mention, mention that. Um, had the opportunity to help uh, Jerry Flinter and his trail committee. Uh, I know there was quite a few people down there uh, handing out candy, dressed up as <coughs> whatever this year. I'm, I'm not sure. Last year I liked the scarecrow outfit. But, uh, <laughs> the toy story. Uh, yeah. Uh, they did a great job down there. Uh, there was lots of, uh, lots of treats to be passed out. A lot of people uh, went through uh, the gates. So thank you to Jerry Flinter and his trail committee for all that they did down there. And also to the city because I know they were down there cleaning off the uh, um, uh, walkways. So they were, the, the leaves were quite thick. Um, it's nice to see our new uh, leaf machine out here. I thought it was a Zamboni at first. I thought we were gonna be doing ice down here, but uh, it's nice to see that. Um, piece of equipment's been acquired and everything. Mike told me I could take it for a ride. So uh, I'm kind of waiting for that. Um, we do have our Veterans Day program coming up uh, in uh, November 11th. The American Legion will once again be hosting a veteran um, from the Vietnam War. His name was uh, Bud Alley and he will be speaking on a couple different occasions here. One of them is gonna be up at the Senior Center also. So uh, kind of excited about that. Uh, if anybody's been out by the uh, cemetery, um, the new doors have been installed at the uh, chapel. They look really nice. Um, we, uh, we'll have to talk about that <laughs> in a while, but uh, before the uh, uh, whole thing is completed. And last but not least, just, just heard that uh, uh, Commissioner Bianski goes in tomorrow for a procedure into Illinois, so I'm not much of a prayer person, but I uh, want to wish him the best of luck on, uh, on that. So he said it was an exorcism. Right, is that what it was, an exorcism? <laughs> his words, his, yeah. What? So we'll see what happens. We'll oh, see what right. we get back. So his head will spin around. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and my chair keeps falling. I'm yeah, that must be what it is. <coughs> it is, I'm get, getting shorter. Residual of that. All right, now my Mr. Swim, <laughs> if you would like to follow that. I don't, I, it's, that's a tough one to follow. Yeah, I agree. Now, can, thank you to the trail. I mean, once again, ninth year straight, my wife outdid herself on the family costume, so we got our annual picture. I'm sure you've seen it on the Facebook already. So we, we have a blast, and I know all the families in the region that attend to that. Um, there's a lot of work that goes into that, so thank you. Those who donated, spent volunteer time, participated. It's a big deal for our community. Uh, I'm just going to close with this. It's, it's been a blessing to serve the community of Buchanan for the last four years. I'm excited to see how these election results turn out. Uh, I'm hopeful I'll have the opportunity to serve another four years at the, the will of the people here, but we've made a lot of progress in the time that has gone on down here, and I look forward to what the next four years looks like if I so am so lucky to be here. So thank you. Um, it's been a pleasure serving with this group, the past group, the team here at City Hall, and on to Tuesday. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, as Larry said, thank you to McBain. That was amazing, the amount of work that they put into and, and the amount of people that donated to them and to get them on the road and to see their pictures uh, from people you know who are involved in that situation is devastating. So thank you for everybody at McBain Lane for that. Uh, the trail did a fantastic job as always serving the, serving the community, the officers, everybody involved. I mean, this is, this is always a community effort to make things happen in that nature and to keep kids safe and parents safe and get everybody home uh, to enjoy their candy. Um, voting on Tuesday, uh, best of luck to, to Larry and Patrick and, and Tony and the other two individuals, I, Laura Lai and Angela, I apologize, I did not commit those to memory. Uh, best of luck for everybody. I know that it's it's 
been a, a very interesting election year. So let's see. We'll put Tuesday to close, and we'll move on, and we'll still be here on Tuesday and uh, enjoying each other's company. So what's that? I was just picking up some trash. Oh, okay. Uh, other than that, that's all I have. Uh, thank you, everybody, for who attended tonight. I will take a motion to adjourn. I'll so move. I have a second. Support. Roll call, please. Money. Yes. One. Yes. George. Yes. Reedon. Yes. Matthew. Yes. Yes. Caleb, will all all five of us be here for the next meeting, though? Uh -uh. So <laughs> if they lose, they won't be. Right. I thought we changed that so that next next, next year. Okay. Yeah. 2025. Yeah.